Hello my dear students. So in this session I am going to solve one sample gate question. So this was the gate question asked 2008. You can go through this question. A single phase half controlled converter. It is shown in the figure. Feeding high inductive load. Okay. The converter is operating at a firing angle. Alpha is equal to 60 degrees. See here. The converter is operating at a firing angle. Alpha is equal to 60 degrees. Right. Next, if the firing pulses, firing pulses are suddenly removed, the steady state output voltage of the waveform is dash. That means we have to draw the steady state output voltage waveform after the gate pulses are removed for both the thyristors. Understood? So let us try this, try to solve this question. So you have to understand the concept of semi-converter here. So just look here. Let us name the thyristor, upper group thyristor T1, this one. This is T2. This is D1 and D2. So this is our supply voltage, Vs. Okay. So now, at the beginning, gate signal is alpha is equal to 60 degrees. Gate signal is given at alpha is equal to 60 degrees, right? And load is said to be high inductive. So after reaching steady state, we have removed the gate signals for both the thyristors, right? Now what is the output voltage waveform after the gate pulses are removed for both the thyristors. I hope the question is clear, right? Right. So now let us discuss the question here. So let me show the supply voltage waveform first. So supply voltage is sinusoidal in this case. So this is our supply voltage which is sinusoidal. If you see in all positive half cycles, these two diagonal elements are forward biased, T1 and D2. So all positive half cycles, T1 and D2 is forward biased. Okay. And then in all negative cycles, these two diagonal devices, T2 and D1 is forward biased. Okay. Now for T1, let me give the gate signal at alpha, where alpha is equal to 60 degrees, where alpha is equal to 60 degrees. So now let us draw the output voltage waveform. Okay. So already load has reached steady state. And since the load is high inductive, so load current is already constant. See, already load has reached steady state because the load is high inductive, load current is constant, ripple free load current, right? Now, let us draw this output voltage waveform. Now, where we are giving gate signal for thyristor T1 here? So, for the thyristor T1, I am giving gate signal at alpha is equal to 60 degrees. So, here, okay, at alpha is equal to 60 degrees at alpha is equal to 60 degrees gate signal is given for thyristor t1 okay at alpha is equal to 60 degrees we are giving gate signal for thyristor t1 and in the negative cycle we give the gate signal for the thyristor t2 at pi plus alpha so at pi plus alpha gate signal is given for the thyristor t2 Similarly, in the next positive cycle again at 2 pi plus alpha, gate signal is given again for T1. Now, what happens when gate signal is given for T1? T1 is already forward biased. So, T1 begins to conduct at alpha. Okay. So, T1 begins to conduct at alpha. And D2 also will conduct. So, when these two diagonal elements are conducting, see this is the direction of inductive current. So after reaching steady state, this load current is constant, right? So current passing through T1 will pass through the load and like this. So circuit is closed. So both the load terminals are connected to the AC source. 
so v naught is same as v s when these two devices are conducting in the pass through half cycle so in the pass through half cycle t1 and d2 is conducting t1 and d2 is conducting okay so when t1 and d2 is conducting when these two diagonal elements are conducting the load elements are directly connected to the ac supply so v naught is same as the supply voltage v naught is same as the supply voltage okay now what is happening in the first mode here so actually it is inductive load source is delivering power to which element some energy is dissipated in i square r losses and some energy is stored in the inductance in the form of half l i square now what is the nature of inductance it will store energy for part of a cycle after some time it starts releasing energy by reversing its voltage polarities so in order to satisfy the kvl equation when the drop of resistance is same as supply voltage vl become zero when vl become zero l is not able to store energy so next cycle it will try to release energy by reversing its voltage in order to satisfy kvl in the loop so vl become negative so it starts releasing energy through t1 and t2 t1 and d2 to i square r losses but what happens after pi radians see what happens after pi radians after pi radians the supply voltage polarity is reverses see when the supply voltage polarity is reverses in the negative cycle these two diagonal elements are forward biased okay in the negative cycle when the supply voltage polarity is reverses these two elements are forward biased so immediately when voltage reverses d1 begins to conduct what happens when d1 begins to conduct just before pi just before pi current is passing through t1 and d2 right just before pi current is passing through thyristors t1 and t1 and see here current is passing through thyristor t1 and then d2 so that is the loop actually just before pi this is just before pi just before pi now what happens immediately after pi here so immediately after pi when the supply voltage reverses d1 is forward biased so d1 starts conducting when d1 starts conducting this inductive current will bypass through d1 inductive current will bypass through d1 so when inductive current bypass through d1 anode current of d2 becomes zero and then and then what happens d2 stops conducting when d2 stops simultaneously what happens so this minus terminal will appear here this plus will appear here that means when d1 begins the negative voltage of supply appears negative voltage across d2 that means the negative voltage of supply directly applying negative voltage across d2 and simultaneously current becomes zero that means immediately after pi when supply voltage reverses inductive current will bypass through d1 and because d1 is conducting the negative voltage of ac supply applies negative voltage across d2 so d2 will immediately switch off when d1 begins after pi okay and then after pi even t2 is forward biased now see after pi even t2 is forward biased but i did not give the gate signal if i don't give the gate signal for t2 then t1 continues to conduct even in the negative cycle because t2 remains in the off state so until t2 remains in the off state because of inductive energy t1 continues even in the negative cycle and d1 begins so what happens in the next cycle so t1 d1 see this is the loop so t1 d1 will conduct so next mode is free willing period so when t1 d1 is conducting the load terminals are shorted when load terminals are shorted what happens when load terminals are shorted the load voltage becomes zero so what happens in the next mode 
so in the next mode t1 and d1 see in the next mode t1 continues to conduct <coughs> because t2 i did not give gate signal so t1 continues to conduct <coughs> and d1 begins so d2 will switch off t1 d1 free willing and what is our question in our question i want to draw the output waveform after the gate pulses are removed for all the thyristors so i don't want to give the gate pulse, gate pulses here see i don't want to give the gate pulses here what happens if i don't give gate pulses here so i am stopping the gate pulses i want to draw the waveform after the gate pulses are removed for all the thyristors from now onwards i remove the gate signals what happens if i don't give gate signals because if i don't give gate signal for t2 t2 will not turn on if t2 will not turn on t1 is already conducting so that means t1 continues in the entire negative cycle so t1 and d1 continues in the entire negative cycle because i did not give gate signal for t2 so in the negative cycle see here in the negative cycle i did not give the gate signal for t2 so t2 will not turn on t2 will not turn on so here t2 will not turn on in this case t2 will not turn on so t1 is always in the on state because of high inductance so d1 continues to conduct so t1 and d1 free willing period so here entire negative cycle t1 d1 continues to conduct t1 d1 continues to conduct so that is called free willing period during free willing period when t1 d1 is conducting the load terminals are shorted so output voltage is zero okay right after that next positive cycle see here also i did not give gate signal for t1 so here also i am not giving gate signal for t1 see even though you don't give gate signal t1 is already conducting now see whether you give the gate signal or not already t1 is conducting so for conducting thyristor what is the need of gate signal so t1 continues even in the next cycle also okay see t1 is already conducting so whether the gate signal is given given or not it continues in the next cycle also in the next cycle d2 is forward biased so d2 begins what happens when d2 begins d1 will off okay so t1 and d2 again t1 and d2 again vs so vs means same waveform so what is your observation here this is again vs so that means what is your observation in positive cycles t1 and d2 will conduct see this is transient waveform no here gate signal is given i don't want this waveform now what is the waveform i require here according to the given question what is the output waveform after the gate pulses are removed for both the scrs so after the gate pulses are removed for both the scrs in the positive cycle see you can see from here see positive cycle t1 d2 that means it is behaving like half wave rectifier positive cycle t1 d2 right negative cycle free willing see here positive cycle t1 d2 positive cycle t1 d2 negative cycle free willing so t1 d2 output voltage is same as vs t1 d1 free willing so that is the right answer after reaching steady state see don't consider this waveform i want the waveform after the gate pulses are removed so positive cycle t1 d2 next free willing so that means it is behaving like half wave rectifier positive cycle t1 d2 vs negative cycle free willing so answer is option a so what is the general mistake we might do here in this case so the general mistake is unfortunately we say sir alpha is pi by 3 so this may be the answer see here gate signal is removed very clearly they said if the firing pulses are suddenly removed after that draw the steady state waveform okay so that is why answer is option a so here student should understand the basic concept in a proper way and then student should understand the question properly generally student understand the question but he will not understand the 
question properly. He will understand the concept. He know the concept, but he will not read the question properly. The moment he sees semi-converter, immediately this is the mistake student will do. Alpha is equal to pi by 3. Some student will do this mistake also for full converter. Okay, so be careful students. So here mainly in gate examination, even though you understand the concept, you should understand the question very clearly. Understand the question very clear. Definitely you can. Right student? So here just I gave a sample for one of the gate question. Thank you students. All the best for your bright future.